Criminal cases don't get more disturbing than the bizarre and unexplained murder of 16-year-old Jeanette De Palma. Jeanette De Palma disappeared on August 7, 1972, and was found murdered a month later, with her body surrounded by strange satanic objects. The murder of Jeanette De Palma has remained unsolved for 50 years, with many believing Jeanette to be the victim of a satanic ritual. To this day, the circumstances surrounding Jeanette De Palma's death remain unknown. Welcome to this channel. Today we're going to take a look at a 50-year-old cold case. In this video, we'll be taking a look at Jeanette De Palma and the events that transpired in Springfield Township where she died. Before we continue, make sure you like, share and subscribe to get notified about our latest videos. And now let's take a look at the sad story of Jeanette De Palma's murder. Jeanette De Palma was born on August 3, 1956 and lived in the New Jersey suburb of Springfield. Although Jeanette was from a devoted Christian family, she did have a wild side, which is quite understandable, considering that she had turned 16 on March 3, 1972. She was believed to have been murdered sometime on or around August 7, 1972, in Springfield Township, Union County, New Jersey, United States. On the afternoon of August 7, 1972, 16-year-old high school student Jeanette De Palma left her home on Clearview Road in Springfield Township, Union County, New Jersey, telling her mother that she was going to ride a train to a friend's house. Her parents filed a missing person complaint to the Springfield Police Department the following day after she failed to show up at a friend's house or return home later that evening. Police began to search for the whereabouts of Jeanette De Palma. Police finally got a lead on Jeanette's disappearance about a month and two weeks later on September 19, 1972. According to the police report, a dog in Springfield, New Jersey, came out of a wooden area carrying an object and began playing with it on the lawn of a nearby apartment. When the dog's owner went to examine what she thought was a large bone, she was horrified to see that it was actually a decomposing human arm. Springfield police were called to the scene, and responding officers later recalled what they saw when they arrived at the woman's residence. Officer Schwartz said in the report, She took me to the rear door of her apartment, and in a bluish bag, the arm of a female, the lower left arm on the fingernails, was a whitish nail polish. The remainder of the body was soon discovered on a small clearing on top of a steep hill by search teams as they combed through Hodale Quarry often known as the Devil Teeth by locals. These skeletal remains were reportedly surrounded by several odd and perhaps occult artefacts, according to multiple witnesses who were present at the site. Various accounts exist, but the most widely accepted one claims that the remains were discovered inside a coffin-shaped enclosure made of downed branches and logs, and this enclosure included several tiny, improvised wooden crosses. Later, some Springfield citizens claimed that the remains had been discovered next to decapitated animal remains on top of a pentagram and other occult objects in the coffin-shaped enclosure. However, this claim has been denied by law enforcement officials. The discovery of a body on a cliff that had been referred to by locals for many years as the Devil's Teeth sparked a debate as many believed that the person murdered had been the victim of a satanic cult. The body was so badly decomposed that it took dental records to definitely identify the body as that of Jeanette De Palma. An autopsy was performed which failed to produce a cause of death. The Springfield Police Department opened an inquiry into De Palma's death. There were no bone fractures, gunshot wounds or knife attacks on her remains or clothing. No drug-related equipment was discovered on or near the body. For unknown reasons, the coroner believed strangulation to be the cause of death, and the Union County Prosecutor's Office decided to handle the case as an unsolved homicide. The coroner also noted an exceptionally high concentration of lead in the body parts after a toxicology screening test, but no explanation was offered for this finding either. Springfield police received a tip about a homeless man residing in the woods close to the quarry early on the investigation. Locals referred to him simply as Red, and it was claimed that he left his campsite in the woods not long after De Palma's disappearance. Despite the initial promise of this lead, the Union County Prosecutor's Office ultimately came to the conclusion that Red had nothing to do with De Palma's murder. The case eventually went cold as a result of the lack of public tips and the contradictory accounts given to the police by the victim's family, friends and peers. 
Despite rumors and suggestions that De Palma may have died from a drug overdose, no drug-related equipment was discovered on, near or around her body, and friends and family were unaware of her use of any illicit or prescription drugs other than an occasional social joint of marijuana. The idea of a drug overdose is not mentioned in De Palma's autopsy report, and medical examiner Bernard Ehrenberg publicly stated that he suspected strangling since he was unable to rule it out while examining her remains. The release of Anton Levy's Satanic Bible and the murder of the Mason family contributed to the developing conviction that a dark power was emerging from the Underwood at the time of De Palma's death, even though the iconic Satanic Panic of 1980 had not yet occurred. The De Palmas were very strong Christian believers and believed that Jeanette's death was a part of an occult ritual. What gave more credence to this claim was the fact that, during this period, the Watchung Reservation was commonly used by Satanists to practice their faith. All this led the police to suspect a connection between the two, with the police even bringing in a witch to investigate and see if they could get any more information. Around two weeks after the discovery of De Palma's remains, a number of publications, including the New York Star Ledger and the New York Daily News, started reporting that Jeanette might have been the subject of an occult sacrifice performed either by Satanists or by a neighborhood coven of witches who operated inside the nearby Wachung Reservation. Words like sacrifices, rituals, witchcraft and Satan were frequently added to the publications as front pages. These publications were spurred by reports that the body had been found surrounded by strange objects and by the theories of James Tate, the pastor of the De Palma family and Assemblies of God Church. Rumors about the case set off a panic in several Union County communities, which were still recovering from the shock of the John List murders only ten months earlier. Weird NJ Magazine started covering the decades-old cold case in the late 1990s and early 2000s after getting multiple anonymous letters about De Palma's passing. Editor and co-founder Mark Moran started looking into the case and wrote on numerous allegedly strange elements, such as the claim that Springfield police had lost or destroyed the case file. The file was lost, according to the Springfield Police Department, as a result of floods brought on by Hurricane Floyd in 1999. Some claim there's still a copy somewhere. The book Death on the Devil's Teeth, The Strange Murder That Shocked Suburban New Jersey was co-authored by Moran and Weird NJ journalist Jesse P. Pollock and published in the year 2015. While the book contains stories about Jeanette's death, it provides nothing definite in way of answers. While investigating Jeanette's case for the book, Pollock and Moran found multiple examples of a potential cover-up ties to other unsolved homicides and previously unidentified individuals. Richard Cottingham, a convicted New Jersey serial murderer, hinted at possibly kidnapping and killing Jeanette while she was hitchhiking in a series of written claims he made to write to Jesse P. Pollock in the spring of 2021. Cottingham agreed to talk to investigators if they would meet with him, so Pollock forwarded this communication to the Union County Prosecutor's Office. As of December 2022, no update has been given by law enforcement. According to a satanic imagery expert, the placement of the pebbles, sticks, and other objects appear to be random rather than the results of devil worshippers, which cast doubts on the occultic theory. While this case is now about half a century old, we still hope and believe that the truth about this murder will come to light and that the people involved will be brought to justice. What are your thoughts on the sad case of Jeanette De Palma? Was 16-year-old Jeanette the victim of a satanic sacrifice or did she die at the hands of a serial killer? Please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to like, share and subscribe if you found this video enjoyable. See you in the next video.